Hello and welcome back to the Gameplay Ability System Setup Tutorial Series. I'm Thomas M. In this video, we'll be going over event-driven gameplay abilities. So, we just created our damage execution in the last video, and we're going to do one more thing to the damage execution. We're going to have it fire events, and then if the player health is going to drop at or below zero from the damage done, we're going to fire the event die. And then in the player, we're going to receive the event die, and then we're going to do stuff with it. We're actually just going to reopen the level and reset everything, start it over when we die. So without further ado, let's get to it. Our damage execution is this execute implementation. And the last thing we did was add this output modifier to deal damage. The next thing we want to do before we output, I want to find this event. If the damage we're about to do is going to drop their health below zero, we're going to go ahead and tell them to die. So we need to create an event data to fire back at the target actor. We need to give it a tag. So we're going to create this event tag, event.die, and we'll go through that in just a minute, and we'll have the ability respond to that event. And this will ask the gameplay tags manager for that event tag and send it to the player, the actor, target actor. And we're gonna tell them the investigator, the source actor. We're gonna tell them who hurt them. We're gonna make sure the target is set. Then we're gonna ask the target's ability system component that we have from earlier to handle a gameplay event. With this event tag and with a pointer to this event data. Oh. The gameplay tags manager is not here because we're missing an include in our file. We'll go ahead and put it in the header. Play tags module.h is the one we need. Now we jump into Unreal and we compile. Alright, so now we need to make that GA. We gotta make sure that that tag definitely exists before we call that line or we might crash the system. So we're gonna make a gameplay ability. So GA dot. I'll keep it simple. So, I'm gonna compile and save. And over here, we're gonna make sure that we are instance per actor, so we only have one death ability. We're gonna say that this is ability dot die. It's gonna be a new ability tag. Well, that doesn't really matter, but ideally you would cancel just about everything that you're you're doing when you die. But the important thing for this ability is that we trigger it on a tag. So in our damage execution, we just put a tag event dot die that we're telling to go off right here by handling a gameplay event on our target. So we want to make sure that we receive that exact tag. So when our ability triggers here, we're going to add a trigger. And the trigger tag is going to be a new tag. That is event.die. We're going to add that there. And that's our trigger tag. And the source is a gameplay event. So you can trigger an ability when a tag gets added to the actor, or anytime a tag is there. I'm not really sure how this present works. I know added works just fine, but for the most part, most of them are gameplay events. This one in particular is going to be a gameplay event. So when we use an ability trigger, this event activate ability will never be used. We need a different one. Activate ability from event. So this function has an execution just like activate did, but it also has the structure event data. And this event data is what we just created in this damage execution. This F gameplay event data, and we set some stuff. The event tag, the instigator, the target, and then we fired it. So when we fire it, we're getting that handle now in our blueprints. So what we're gonna do here is whenever we get this call die, all we're gonna do is just open the level. Third person example map. Because 
I still haven't created a custom level. And that should work. So what we need to do is add it to our player character. So let's pop open our character blueprint again. And in our abilities, there we go. We have starting passive abilities. We have our speed passive already in here, but we're gonna go ahead and add our ability to die right off the bat. All right. And eventually this list will get huge. So here's a, a pro tip for working with the ability system or in Unreal in general, I guess. So you can go over to your GA or any blueprint class and hit this nice browse button and that just highlights it in the content browser, wherever you're at. And then you can go over to the third person character and use this little button to just add it there. Browse and just bam, that's where it is in the content browser. It's very useful. So now, I can take damage. And when I get down to zero, it reloads the level. And it resets my speed, gets my health back up to 100, and just by default. So. This is the point that we were at when I prepared for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get ready the next part of this tutorial. This is like the first chapter, if you will. Thanks for hanging in there. This, this system is obviously pretty complicated. There's a lot of moving parts to it. There's a lot going on, but it is very powerful. It's a great way to leverage a huge amount of work. If you're trying to create a real-time strategy or a role-playing game, or a hero shooter, anything that, that you know you have a lot of different weapon variations, or you have like heroes that have very specific abilities that you want to do lots of crazy specific things with them. So thanks for tuning in. I'm looking forward to doing this next chapter. This is gonna be a whole lot of fun. So I'll see you then.